This is section 812, polynomials. We're going to predict what the polynomial function looks like. So we're still going to practice sketching a polynomial. We're going to determine where our polynomial function is quote unquote positive and negative. And then from a sign chart, we're going to create a polynomial function. So just to remind you guys, in behavior, based upon the leading coefficient and the degree, which is that highest exponent, we were able to predict basically where our function is going. Whether it's both going up or both going down, you know, we can predict that. And I talked about this more yesterday. We have to have that memorized. Then we also talked about multiplicity. And we said that if we find what the zeros are, right, and we set each equal to zero and solve for it, the number of those zeros gives us the multiplicity. So I had two of these, and I had four of these, and so on and so forth. Now the multiplicity, right, that told us if the multiplicity itself is even, then it's going to touch and rebound from the x-axis or bounce. If the multiplicity is odd, it's going to cross through that zero. So we were able to sketch it, and we all we had to do is find three things. The first was the y-intercept. We needed to know the zeros and its multiplicity, and we needed to know the end behavior. We didn't necessarily know, need to know the order of them, but we needed to know that. So the y-intercept, it's when x is 0. So if I plug in 0 for x, you get 2 times negative 5 times negative 1. And so that's going to give us negative 5, or 5 times 2, which is 10. So my y-intercept is 0, 10. My zeros are negative 2, multiplicity 1, 5 multiplicity 1 and 1 multiplicity 1 right if you set that equal to 0 and solve you add one to both sides that's how I get this positive 1 set that equal to 0 add uh, add 5 to both sides that's how I get the positive 5 and the end behavior x times x times x that gives me x cubed positive and odd so the leading coefficient is positive the degree is odd, and so the end behavior, it's going to do something like that. So now I could take all those things and put them together. My zeros, I have negative 2, I have positive 1, and 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 5, and then I'll just say up here is 10. There's my y-intercept. So my end behavior, I know it starts down there, so it's going to come down here going to cross because the multiplicity is odd. Go to the zero. It's going to cross because the multiplicity is odd. Cross, multiplicity is odd, and it's going to go up forever. Now, it's not super accurate. I'm not saying graph the polynomial exactly. Just draw a sketch. It's all we're looking at. Now, the reason why we want to be able to go through and draw a sketch of this is because what we can actually do is map where our regions are positive and where our regions are going to be negative. Now we call this a sign chart and you're going to see how this sign chart is actually going to help us as we move on when it comes to like inequalities. And so if I were to take let's just say this graph right here all I need to know I can draw a number line and so I would put the zeros on this number line so it crosses at negative 3 it crosses at 0, and it crosses at 2. So negative 3, 0, and 2. Well, on this side of negative 3, it's below, so I know it's going to be negative. Between negative 3 and 0, it's above the x-axis, so it's going to be positive. On between 0 and 2, it's below, so it's going to be negative. And then anything on this side of 2, it's above the x-axis, so it's positive. And so I can break apart, and just by looking at that chart, I know where my function is above and below my graph. And I can look at this and be like, well, if it went from negative to positive, well, my multiplicity must be odd. 
positive to negative, it means it crossed, so my multiplicity is also odd. Negative to positive, my multiplicity is odd. So we can determine what our multiplicity is from that. And because of that, we can construct a polynomial from this. So I can go through and once again, negative to positive, positive, negative to positive, right? I can just look at this and be like, oh, well, my multiplicity is odd. Multiplicity is odd. Multiplicity is odd because it's switching. And I could even graph something like that. Here's negative 3. Here's negative 1. That should be a positive 4. And so here's positive 4. And so negative crosses. It's positive. Crosses. Negative. Crosses. Positive. Now it's not exact, but this is a visual polynomial of what that could look like. And that's OK. We have something of what it could look like. As long as it's crossing at those values there, the regions represent on one it's negative, the other it's positive, negative, and positive. We're good. So now we're going to sketch the polynomial and create the sign chart. So same thing. We need to find the same y-intercept. We need to know the zeros and its multiplicity. And then we need to know the in behavior. So my y-intercept, I plug 0 in for x. So you get negative 2 times 5 squared. And so that's going to give us negative uh, 50. Because 25 times negative 2. My zeros, I have 2 multiplicity 1 and negative 5 multiplicity 2. So I know it's going to cross. And here it's going to bounce. And then the end behavior, x times x squared, so that's x cubed, right? There's not a negative here or anything, so that's positive and odd. So my end behavior will look something like that. So now I can put those together uh, at 2, and then negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so it's going to start down here. At negative 5, it's going to bounce. At 2, it's going to cross. OK, I have the correct zeros. I have the correct multiplicity. I'll just say this is negative 50. Why not? Uh, my end behavior is correct. It guess it passes through the y-intercept, even though it's scaled awkward. That's OK. And so now my sign chart for this, we have negative 5 and 2. Well, just by looking at the polynomial, this is below, so it's negative. In between here, it's also negative. And then on this side, it's positive. Now you can also test this. And so this is actually the algebraic way of doing this. You remember if back in the inequalities, remember how you plug values in and you see if it's true or false? Well, instead of plugging them in and seeing if it's true or false, you're going to plug it in and see if it's positive or negative. So if I plugged in negative 6 here, Negative 6 minus 2 is negative. Well, negative 6 plus 5 squared is positive. So this is positive. Negative times a positive is negative. What if I plugged in 0? 0 minus 2, that's negative. 0 plus 5, that's 5. 5 squared, that's positive. A negative times a positive is negative. If I plugged in 3, right, it's on this side of the number line. 3 minus 1, or 3 minus 2 is 1, it's positive. 3 plus 5, okay, that's po positive, and positive is a positive. So we could also plug those values in to determine that. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and give this problem a shot. Okay, so let's go over it. So our zeros are 2, negative 2, and 3, and they're all multiplicity 1. The y intercept. You plug in 0 for x, so 2 times negative 2 times 2 times negative 3. Remember, you can't forget that 2 in front. Some of us probably did that. So that's 8 times 3, so that's going to be 24. And then, oh, that is, there we go. And then the end behavior, so for this, we have 2 times x times x times x, so that's x cubed. Positive and odd, there's my end behavior. So drawing my graph, 2, negative 2, 3, 
3. So it starts down here. Negative 2, it's going to cross because it's the multiplicity. Uh, we'll say that's 24. So it's going to go up to 24. It's going to cross. It's going to cross. It's going to go on forever. So my sign chart, negative 2, 2, and 3. On this side, it's negative. Between negative 2 and positive 2, it's above. So that's positive. Between 2 and 3 is negative. And then from 3, it's positive. And so there's my sign chart. So what did we learn today? Well, we talked about polynomials and how to sketch them again, and then with sign charts. And so what do we need to know to sketch a polynomial? We need to know the y-intercept, the zeros and its multiplicity, and the end behavior. And then what is a sign chart? The sign chart just represents where my graph is above and below the y or the x-axis. Okay, so if it's above, it's positive. If it's below the x-axis, it's negative. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.